This is a chest x-ray on a 53-year-old female patient. And this is the lateral chest radiograph on the same patient. Although today's teaching point is simple and quick, it's an extremely practical point. Given the practicality of the teaching point that we're going to learn from this case, I think this is a good case for anybody who's reading chest radiographs. Now, uh, with a bit of history on the patient, uh, she presented with fever and cough. So you're practically making sure there's no pneumonia. At a first glance, you might not see anything, but comparing the left and the right side, you'd wonder about this area here. See how the right and left side are equal in density, but there is minimal increased density in the right lower lung compared to the left. So this is the first point. Compare the left and right side whenever you're looking for opacities. That would be very useful. Now for those who are not sure that there is actually something in the right lower lung, let's look at the lateral chest radiograph. Many physicians are more relaxed when they read the frontal radiograph, but are afraid when they read the lateral chest radiograph. That's why I call this the scary lateral. However, it's not as scary as you think. You should not shy away from reading the lateral x-rays. Once you know a few landmarks, it's actually easier to read both the lateral and frontal together. So what teaching point could we learn from the lateral chest radiograph of today's case? The rule is, if you look over the posterior chest, over the spine, the density should decrease as you go from above below. So you're going to have increased darkness as you go in this direction. This is because you see more white structures in the upper lungs from the projection of the soft tissues of the shoulders. If you don't have an increased darkness as you go from above below over the spine, this tells you that there is something wrong in the lower lungs. So it tells you that there is something abnormal in one of the lower lobes, on the right or on the left. Which is the case here. You see this sudden increase in density in the lower lung corresponding to what you thought is abnormal on the frontal radiograph. And this is what we call the spine sign. When you see sudden increase in density in the lower lungs, denoting an abnormality there. Since the finding was missed on the chest radiograph, unfortunately the patient underwent a CT since she was symptomatic. And as you see here, the CT confirmed the presence of this uh, right lower lobe consolidation consistent with pneumonia. If the clinician reading the initial CT detected the abnormality, the patient would have not underwent the CT scan. As you know, pneumonia in adults is a clinical diagnosis that does not require a CT scan and could be followed clinically and with chest radiographs. The first teaching point is compare both lungs to make sure you don't have any increase in density in one area compared to the other. The second teaching point is the lateral is not as scary as you think. The density over the spine should decrease as you go from above below. If that's not the case, that means that there is increased density in the lower lung in what's called a positive spine sign. And finally, apart from a few exceptions, pneumonia is a clinical diagnosis that does not require a CT scan. As I said, Today's case is simple, yet practical and extremely important. If you think this is useful, please send me your comments. I would also appreciate it if you spread the word about the account. One thing I would like to say before I finish this case is thanks for following us. You guys are awesome and you're the reason we're doing this. And that's it for today's case. Thanks for watching and see you with more cases later this week. Hello again. This is a good case for juniors. We're looking at a uh, non-contrast CT. And this is the uh, pelvic uh, part of this abdominal pelvic CT.
this is the uh, pelvic bone. You're looking at the uh, patient from his feet. So this is anterior, this is posterior, this is right, and this is left. And the abnormality is this uh, well-defined, uh, relatively low-density structure that's adjacent to the urinary bladder. The first thing is to make sure that this has no soft tissue components, and by measuring the density, it's so low, consistent with fluid. So this is a fluid-containing structure. The structure is extremely well-defined, and there are no surrounding changes within the fat. We learned from previous examples that clean fat is good, since fat stranding denotes inflammation, and this is not seen here. The lesion is far away from the uh, colon, which is here. It's also far away from this structure, which is the seminal vesicles. And it's unrelated to the structure here below the uh, bladder, which is the prostate. Now, to confirm that this has no soft tissue components, we could give contrast and see if we have any enhancing parts. And this is the CT on the same patient after giving contrast and imaging at a portovenous phase where you see both arteries and veins being opacified. Yet the structure that you have here doesn't have any obvious enhancing components, maybe a very thin rim of uh, wall enhancement. Since the structure is closely related to the urinary bladder, which we see here, let's make sure it does not connect to it. You might wonder about some deficiency in the rim here, which could denote communication with the urinary bladder. To confirm this is connected to the urinary bladder, you could do one of two things. You could either inject contrast directly in the urinary bladder using a Foley catheter, or with an easier and less invasive way, wait for our contrast to reach the kidneys and excrete the IV contrast into the urinary bladder. In other terms, you do what's called a delayed CT scan, and that's waiting for about three to five minutes after giving IV contrast. And that's what we did here. You see the right and left kidneys on this delayed acquisition with contrast filling the renal collecting system. This bright dot here and there represent the right and left contrast filled ureters. So let's follow that. And as we go all the way down, the right ureter connects here to the urinary bladder. The left ureter connects there. You also see a uh, fluid level. This is urine and this is excreted IV contrast. That's because the patient is supine, lying on his back, and because contrast is heavier than urine, and that's why you have urine above contrast. Not only that, here you could see that there is some connection between the urinary bladder and that adjacent structure. And partially by the effect of gravity, this structure is filling with the dependent contrast, similar to what we saw in the urinary bladder. So that's confirmation that this is connected to the urinary bladder, and this represents a urinary bladder diverticulum. A common reason for uh, having a urinary bladder diverticulum is that the pressure or the volume within the urinary bladder increases and this creates an area of weakness within the wall from which a bulge may appear. This is called a pulsion diverticulum. Now seniors with keen eyes might have noticed that the urinary bladder wall is mildly thickened as you see here. You may have also appreciated that this uh, soft tissue area here, which we call the prostate, is enlarged and it bulges into the urinary bladder. Such prostatic enlargement with uh, the central portion that pushes into the urinary bladder is very classic for benign prostatic hyperplasia. An entity that is very common uh, and uh, it's typically seen in uh, older males. This patient was about 60 years old. And this enlargement might affect the uh, base of urinary bladder and the urethra and lead to back pressure within the urinary bladder, which explains why you have minimal thickening of the wall of the urinary bladder as well as this pulsion diverticulum posteriorly. So this quick case was uh, to show this neat entity, which is relatively common in practice, a urinary bladder diverticulum, which is a result of increased uh, pressure within the urinary bladder commonly due to enlargement of the prostate in the context of benign prostatic hyperplasia.
you learn from this case that if you see an abnormality, make sure that it does not connect or relate to the adjacent structures. That helps you in your differential diagnosis. You also learn that assessing the density is of great help, knowing if the uh, lesion is of fluid attenuation or soft tissue attenuation or even both. We learned that enhancement in a lesion is a good indicator of a soft tissue component, which was not present here. And we also learned that part of the workup for uh, assessing the uh, collecting system on a CT scan could involve doing a delayed acquisition. A urinary bladder diverticulum is much easier to appreciate on the delayed acquisition since it would fill with the excreted contrast. And that concludes today's case. Thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you with more cases later.